We all been there. You work on your game for months and you create the best possible assets for it. You create a really good gameplay experience, but at the end, your game's performance is, let's say, not acceptable. Your game can't even make it to 20 frames per second, let alone 30. So talking about 60 frames per second is out of the question. So what are the ways that you can improve the performance of your game? I'm going to talk about a few tips and tricks that will skyrocket the frames per second in your game and these tips and tricks are going to apply to two best game engines out there, Unity and Unreal. Starting with Unity Game Engine, the first thing where you can save your game performance is in the beginning of your game. And with this I mean all the resources that your game is required to load. This is known as loading time. Loading time refers to how long the game takes to load. This includes the first load when the game is opened and the loading that happens during runtime, for example between your game scenes. While not usually a major issue, having extremely long loading times or having loading screens appear far too often can negatively affect the user experience. To reduce the length of loading screens, consider splitting up the work done during them. This can mean preloading assets beforehand to reduce the number of objects that need to be loaded during loading screen or reducing the complexity of loaded scenes. For example, in an open world game where many objects need to be loaded during runtime, a method of recycling or streaming assets can be implemented. In the inside of the game, a small part of every frame is dedicated to loading and unloading assets. This allows the whole game experience to be played through with just a single initial loading screen. Also make sure to know which function you will use to load your game assets when your game starts. We already know that Unity has the awake function and the start function, but sometimes using one over the other means a lot when it comes to avoiding performance and even bug issues in your game. The next very important thing to know is where to put your gameplay logic or where will the main game mechanism of your game take place. In all game engines that happens in the so-called update functions which are called every frame. In Unity we have three types of update function. We have the normal update function, next we have the fixed update and finally we have the late update function. As I already said, update functions are called every frame. So what is the difference between the three update functions in Unity? Update is called once per frame from every script in which it is defined. Calling of update function is dependent on the frame rate. For high frame rate, the time interval will be low. But for the low frame rate, the time interval will be high. Fixed update is called every few frames and it is customizable in Unity. But by default, fixed update can be called multiple times per frame if the frame rate is low or it may not be called per frame if the frame rate will be high. So it is quite possible that fixed update will be called more than update. And lastly, late update is also called every frame but the main difference it is called after all update functions, which means that all calculations that are performed in the update function will finish by the time late update is called. So how can you use these three update functions to optimize your game in Unity? Well, in the update function you will do most things, like moving your character with transform, receive input from the user, implement simple timers and all other non-physics related things. In fixed update, you will perform all physics related calculations. As you are already aware, all game engines have their physics engine, which you can use to move characters, launch projectiles, shoot bullets and so on. Well, all these calculations should take place in the fixed update. 
And last but not least, in the late update, you can put things that need to happen after update or right before the camera renders. For example, if you have a camera that is following your game character, then you can make the camera follow the character after his movement calculation is done, which will make the camera smoother and your game more responsive and optimized. Next, we have scripting, which is the main component of all your game objects. As you already know, Unity uses C Sharp programming language for its scripts and this is the first thing where regular programmers have issues. You see, even though Unity uses C Sharp, this is not the same C Sharp as you would use to create a desktop app. Now, of course, you will use object-oriented programming, inheritance and polymorphism to create your game, but not all programming patterns, algorithms and techniques that you would use to create a desktop app or a mobile app would apply when you want to create a game in Unity. Because Unity uses scripts to make the game objects interact in the game, every game object will have its own script. But what's specific about Unity is that you should not put too many lines of code in a single script because this will affect your game performance, especially if that script is shared with more than one game object. The way Unity performs that you do things is create a script for every operation that you have for your game object. For example, if you have an enemy game object, you will create a script that will handle enemy's movement, then another script that will control the animations of the enemy, then another script that will control enemies attacking, and so on. As you can see from this example, we have three scripts for one game object that are controlling different aspects of that game object. And this is how you will optimize your scripts for the best possible performance when it comes to Unity Game Engine. Next, we have game objects. Now, we already know that game objects are the main component of our games because they represent our characters, enemies, collectible items, and so on. Now, the more game objects you have in your game, or to be more precise, the more new game objects you are creating in your game while the game is running, so during runtime, the more you will hit the optimization of your game. So, if your game needs to create new game objects all the time, like collectible items, enemies, bosses, parts of the level, you need to avoid using instantiate functions. Instead, you will need to use a technique called pooling. The idea of pooling is that in the beginning of your game, you create all the game objects that you need and store them in a pool or to be more precise, an array of game objects. Then whenever you need a specific game object, you would reach inside its pool and check if the game object is not already active and used in the game and spawn it or activate it and make it usable in the game. This way, you don't have to create a new game object from scratch. Instead, you just activate a game object that is not active, which was already created, and this saves your game performance tenfold. Moving on to Unreal Engine. As we already know, in Unreal Engine, you can use the all famous blueprint system, which is visual coding, as well as C++, which is traditional coding. Visual coding is more appealing to a lot of people, especially to beginners, for obvious reasons. You can create a full game with all its mechanic without writing a single line of code. You just drag nodes and connect them to each other so that they will perform your desired operation. But with all that ease, there is a catch. Blueprints are less optimized than using pure C++. Of course, blueprints and all its nodes are programmed, which means code is used to create them even though you can visually see the nodes and not the code. But when your game runs, the compiler needs to run the code and not the nodes, which means that the compiler needs to convert the nodes into code and then read the code. As you can see, when you use blueprints, you have one more step that the compiler needs to go over before he can use that code to move your game and this will lower the performance of your game. Now, don't get me wrong, 
you can create an amazing game using just blueprints. But if you want to optimize your game as much as you can, then you should use C++ whenever you can instead of blueprints. Because the fact is that blueprints are always going to be slower at everything they do than their counterpart in C++. Same as in Unity, also in Unreal Engine, when your game first starts, you need to load your game assets. The most common mistake people make in Unreal Engine is that they overuse the onBeginPlay function. It's true that onBeginPlay is used to initialize your game when it starts, but at the same time, when you overuse it, you are risking a huge performance hit right at the startup, especially if you're using blueprints. The solution to this is to instantiate whatever you can in the construction script that doesn't need to be done at runtime. The construction script will run before on begin play and it's safer and easier to load everything you need in the construction script than in on begin play. That way, by changing this simple thing, you will save a lot of game performance right in the beginning. And I know someone might think, how hard can the game performance be hit in the beginning of the game when you load the assets? Just think about if your game is an exploration-based RPG or a click-and-point game where you have a couple of levels. How many assets would you need to create just for one game level? Not to mention a couple of them. And when you load all those assets at runtime, this is where the optimization problem begins. So avoiding that early in your game will save you a ton of headaches later on. The equivalent of update in Unity is the tick event in Unreal Engine, which means that tick is called every frame. Now the general rule is don't overuse the tick event and if possible try to avoid it at all. And I know someone will say, but how am I going to create a gameplay mechanic if I don't use the tick event which will update my game every frame? That's the trick. In Unreal Engine, there are numerous ways how you can update your game on a regular interval instead of using the tick event. You can use custom events for this or even create C++ systems that will update your game. When creating these custom systems, try to make the update not happen every frame because that is what we are trying to avoid when we use the tick event. There are ways that you can create events that fire every couple of frames and even C++ systems. And this is ideal if you want to create a game mechanic loop that will run your game and contain your gameplay logic. Again, you can also use the tick event for this, but just keep in mind that you don't overuse it. Keep it simple. Don't perform some complicated calculations inside the tick event or otherwise your game will slow down. I don't want to complete this video without mentioning that you can also reduce the number of triangles for your 3D models and that way you can also save a lot of performance for your game. This applies for Unreal Engine and Unity as well. But the reason why I'm not going to talk about this in more depth is because this is not directly connected to either of the engines. You can create your 3D models in other software like Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D and others and you will need to reduce the number of triangles in those softwares because you can't edit the 3D model directly in the game engines. This also applies for the textures that you will create for your 3D models. You will optimize them within the software in which you created them. So if you want to know in more depth how to do this, you will have to look up the specific software you are using and see how to optimize your 3D models and textures within that software. Again, this is not directly connected to the game engine itself, but it will help you optimize your game in the game engine you are using. Of course, there are a lot more ways how you can improve the performance of your game, no matter if you're using Unity or Unreal Engine. But the ones I mentioned are the most basic ones, which are usually the ones where most people make mistakes because they focus on some advanced game development tactics that will skyrocket the frames per second in their game, that they forget the most basic things that they need to optimize in their game. And not to forget, the more you learn and the more games you create, the better you will be at optimizing your games. 
Anyways, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, comment and share the video so that others can see it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I have some links down in the description that will help you learn game development and learn how to optimize your games. So make sure to check them out. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.